Hello everyone. Welcome to General Sciences Biology Module 16. Today's lesson is on bacteria and its applications. I'm with Risha from GK today and I'll be taking you through this. What are bacteria? Bacteria are unicellular microorganisms which were first observed and reported by Anton von Leeuwenhoek in 1676. They are unicellular and prokaryotic. Their size and shape vary according to the species and uh, usually range between 0.5 to 50 microns. If you ask which is the smallest bacteria, the answer is Fasciarella, which is 0.7 microns. And the largest bacteria is Vigiota, which ranges between 15 to 22 microns in size. What are the different shapes of bacteria? So bacteria are monocellular microorganisms and are found almost in all places in either singleton form or in group. The cellular wall is usually thick and is made from chitin and murin. They have different shapes such as coccus, which is spherical, bacillus, which is rod-shaped, vibrio, which is comma-shaped, and spirillum, which is corkscrew-shaped. What are G plus and G minus bacteria? So gram staining is a method to identify some of the bacteria on the basis of some chemical properties of their cell wall. Staining means coloring. Not all bacteria can be identified like this. The ones that can be are called gram variable. The others are called gram indeterminate. They can be classified using this technique called gram variable. The cell walls are basically colored using a stain called crystal violet. If the bacteria has lipids and peptidoglycan, its cell wall would appear violet under the microscope and they will be called gram positive. Otherwise, they will be called gram-negative. The cell wall of gram-positive bacteria is thicker because it has more peptidoglycan in comparison to gram-negative bacteria. A chemical called tachoic acid is present in gram-positive bacteria but absent in gram-negative bacteria. How do bacteria move? Now, there are tail-like projections that protrude from the cell body of certain prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. This thing is called flagella. Bacteria usually have them and use them for locomotion. But if they don't have any flagella, they are known as atricus. And in that case, they usually move by means of gliding, like Begiatoa, or they don't move at all, like cocci. Metabolism in bacteria. So bacteria can be autotrophic, heterotrophic as well as saprophytic. So autotrophic bacteria are the ones that produce their own food. They can be photoautotrophic or they do it by photosynthesis or chemoautotrophic that is they convert chemicals to energy. Some bacteria grow on the dead and decaying material and are known as saprophytes. Some bacteria grow on plants and animals are known as parasitic bacteria. The bacteria which make mutually beneficial associations are called symbionts. Chemotrophic bacteria use chemicals to produce energy. Example would be hydrogen bacteria which use hydrogen and sulfur bacteria which uh, oxidize sulfur and uh, reduce them to hydrogen sulfide or inorganic sulfur. How do bacteria reproduce? So reproduction can be either asexual or sexual in bacteria. In asexual reproduction, binary fission happens, which is very similar to mitosis. And in sexual reproduction, it uh, is usually via conjugation, transduction or transformation. We come to pasteurization. So what is pasteurization? So it is one of the methods of preserving products such as milk, alcoholic beverages, etc. It is defined as the process of heating products to a particular temperature and holding it at that temperature for a particular time till the pathogenic or disease-causing microorganisms are destroyed, causing minimum change in composition, flavor, and nutritive value of the product. So what are the ways to pasteurize milk? There are usually two methods which are used. One is LTH or low temperature holding. Another is HTST or high temperature short time. Now LTH is the method where milk is heated to 62.8 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes in either commercial pasteurizers or large closed vats 
uh, where uh, which are heated by steam coils, hot water jackets, etc. In case of HTST or high temperature short time, the milk is heated up to 71.7 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds only. So how does pasteurization work? So the heating during pasteurization is accomplished by electricity or hot water and requires a heat exchange system uh, which preheats the raw cold product and cools it later. So pasteurization conditions are not sufficient to destroy thermoresistant spores, that is, uh, the ones that don't die because of high temperature. Pasteurization does not sterilize the product, but it only kills those organisms that grow most readily at low temperatures. And surviving organisms must be kept from multiplying by constant refrigeration. What is the role of bacteria in nitrogen fixation? Both anaerobic bacteria as well as aerobic bacteria do biological nitrogen fixation. However, the process occurs in the absence of oxygen in case of anaerobic process. Now, biological nitrogen fixation is done by both free living and symbiotic bacteria. Examples would be for free living aerobic bacteria, it's Acetobacter. For free living anaerobic bacteria, it's Clostridium and purple sulfur bacteria. For symbiotic bacteria that are present in root nodules of legumes and pulses, it is rhizobium. Symbiotic bacteria, which is present in the stem knot of sugarcane, is Glucoacetobacter diazotrophicus. Symbiotic bacteria in other plants are Frankia and Azacospiral. Why does biological nitrogen fixation only occur in anaerobic conditions? So the thing is, the enzyme nitrogenase is susceptible to destruction by oxygen. So uh, it reacts in the presence of oxygen and uh, ceases production. So many nitrogen fixing organisms exist only in anaerobic conditions so that they can perform these functions properly. Some aerobic bacteria which carry out the nitrogen fixation use another protein called leghemoglobin to bind the oxygen and bring its level down. BNF in legume plants. So plants that contribute to nitrogen fixation include the legume family like Fabaceae with plants such as pulses, groundnut, clover, soybeans, alfalfa, lupins, peanuts, etc. Now these contain symbiotic bacteria called rhizobium within their nodules in the root system. It is not necessarily that only symbiotic bacteria are able to fix nitrogen and it is also not necessary that only leguminous plants do this. A BNF is also found in sugarcane in which bacteria live in stem nodules. Also, fixed nitrogen is released only when the plant dies. This helps to fertilize the soil. Bacteria and nitrification. So nitrification is a process by which ammonia is converted into nitrate. This is a two-step process and based on these two steps, the bacteria are divided into and nitrate oxidizing bacteria. Example of nitrifying bacteria is nitrosomonas, which converts ammonia into nitrite. Example of nitrite oxidizing bacteria is nitrobacter, which is able to oxidize the nitrite and create nitrate. If you like this tutorial, please do subscribe to our channel GK Today on YouTube. That's all for today. Until the next video, goodbye.